my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. In this episode, prescription drugs are a riddle, getting more expensive and less expensive at the same time. How could both those things be true at once? We're going to talk about that. We want to talk about workarounds as well. Also, there's a new cell phone plan I want you to know about, and it's actually for one individual, $25 a month, unlimited. That's cheap, but you got to know the hoops you got to jump through, I'm going to tell you. So, new report out that new prescription meds are the most expensive they have ever been, ever been. So eight of the 13 new drugs that have been launched this year cost you or your insurer if they're involved or the feds if they're involved over $200,000 a year. Let me say that again. So eight of the 13 newest drugs launched this year cost over 200 grand per year to take them. Average income in the United States, depending on how you measure it, let's say it's 60000 a year. So we're talking about more than three times income just to take a med for a year. Okay, that is past bonkers. And so this is, this is crazy stuff, right? In the country... We spend half a trillion dollars a year on prescription drugs. Big money. So it's such a mixed bag of nuts on the prescription drug thing. Because generics, which are most of what people take, just like 80% of prescriptions now are generics by one thing I saw. Those, there's all these strategies where you can save a ton of money on them. And things you can do that will save you big bucks. And uh, that's something I talk about regularly, the strategies to save money on those prescription drugs that are generics. But what happens if you're a captive and you're written for a brand name? Because the brand name, that's where it gets really ugly. And even if you have a prescription drug plan at work, you may still face enormous exposure of cost on that brand name drug. Okay, so a couple of things I want you to know. A lot of the drugs that don't have a generic are what are called um, defensive drugs. I'm a pharmaceutical company. A drug that I have is coming off patent and can now be made as a generic. So I come up with a new improved version of it that's some kind of combo of a couple of different things. And then voila, I've got this exclusive drug again. You'll see this a lot, uh, for example, with uh, asthma meds is one category where the asthma doctors will be pitched by the pharmaceutical companies about how much better this new combo drug is versus the one that they may have been writing scripts for. And so the doctor says, oh, great, I'm going to write this. And he or she is not really thinking because it's not their money paying for the drug. Oh, so that patient's going to go from spending, let's say, $15 a month for a drug to $2,000 a month for a drug. And often what you can do is a lot of these combo drugs, you can take the individual components separately and take two pills at generic prices versus the one new and improved combo drug have the same medical benefit and at a fraction of the cost. This is why I always talk about you being uh, aware and savvy what happens with these prescriptions. And when a doctor is writing one, you might not want to take up his or her time right there while they're saying, okay, I'm going to prescribe blah, blah, blah for you. But before you leave the office that day, go online, use GoodRx or something like that, 
see what that drug actually costs, and if it turns out it's an eye-popping figure, you say to the person at the desk, hey, I, I can't afford this prescription. Can the doc write something else for me? Because that's why so many prescriptions are abandoned at the pharmacy counter, because you get there and they say it's X number of zillion dollars. Costco shoppers are so cheap that at Costco, when, when a drug pops up that's going to be really expensive to fill, they contact you and say, hey, do you know this drug's going to cost you $1,450 to fill? And they hope the person doesn't pass out and hit their head and need an ambulance to take them to the hospital for a head injury when they hear that cost. And this is, this is a real problem because meds don't come with a price list when the doc writes the script. Now, sometimes when you make it clear that the cost is a real problem for you, suddenly a magic pad appears with a shiny slip with a code on it that gets you the prescription for free or for $25 or something like that. So there are ways around these very high costs, but you got to know how the game is played and be very aware that it's your money that's on the line. Krista? All right, I have some related questions. This is from Edward in Florida. I recently went to a Costco pharmacy to pick up a prescription. When there, when there, the pharmacist informed me that my prescription would cost less if I did not go through my insurer. Apparently, the deals Costco has with some pharmaceutical companies is better. I took my insurance off the prescription, and this particular refill went to, from $16 down to $10, so 38% cheaper. Folks may want to check their own prescriptions and pharmacies. So strange how the health insurance that is supposed to help with costs is actually doing the opposite. So uh, something else about Costco, and you know, Costco has to fill prescriptions for you if you're a member or not. And Costco now has something like the equivalent of member pricing on prescription drugs. And if you come in as a non-member, you don't get the member price, but you're still getting a really cheap price. But I find that with the prescription plan I have, it's almost always cheaper for me to do exactly what Edward has done and just pay the Costco price and not involve my pharmacy plan because I almost always am paying a lot more money on the pharmacy plan than I do just straight as a Costco member. And this is from Mo in Texas. I have Medicare Part D. All my prescriptions are generic. I'm finding out that I can acquire all of my medications through GoodRx and Mark Cuban's Cost Plus at the same or lower cost than through my Part D Medicare provider without a monthly premium. Any negatives to dropping my Part D coverage? Yeah, Mo, um, <laughs> let's go back to the beginning conversation with how expensive brand names can be. Don't drop your Part D. Keep filling your prescriptions through GoodRx or through Mark Cuban. Um, if you're not familiar with Mark Cuban's deal, he set up his own pharmaceutical selling organization that sells prescriptions a lot cheaper than they normally would be. Not as good as a Costco price, but really good prices. And so the reason you need that Part D is because if you don't have the Part D and you end up with an expensive brand name drug, your wallet is going to be shredded. Uh, what's Mark Cuban's? It's costplusdrugs.com. Costplusdrugs.com. And yeah. we have that at Clark.com if, if you can't write that down. Um, okay, we've got another question here. This is from Kim in California. I'm in the process of redoing all of my passwords so that they're not easily hacked. Do you recommend a particular password manager? If so, which one? Or should I write it all down in a little notebook? So there's, uh, th it's so much easier to use a password manager. And there's no perfect password managers. I use the Google password manager but a lot of people swear by LastPass. I use that one. And would you explain for people who don't know what these do, how LastPass works? Well, um, 
it's a it's an online secure password holder and in my case I have a family plan so I can share passwords with my husband and with my parents they can share passwords with me so they can choose what passwords they want me to see that they have um, so I think it's a nice way for families to do something like that in case anything happens to anybody and you can add it to your web browser you can turn it on or off and you can have it on your phone browser as well so it'll fill in passwords for you but you have to put in your master password first so the master password is an unusually complicated long password it should be and <laughs> then the individual passwords are all different so if a criminal is lucky enough to crack your password at one site they don't have the keys to the kingdom to all of them i'm not always great with that admittedly so that's what LastPass does i mean that's what uh you're in LastPass, not Dashlane, right? Right, I'm in LastPass. Yeah. So, I create my own passwords, but I store them there. Okay, you can do the opposite, though, right? They can create them? I'm not sure about that. I haven't used that. Are you, so are, you're, you're still doing your lazy yeah. passwords? I'm just changing them one by one. Okay. Yes, I have a lot. So my wife has, uh, I can't reveal what it is. Because then that would give the keys mm -hmm. to our kingdom. But my wife came up with a very, very clever system for creating unique passwords at each website. And it's just brilliant. So I've adopted her system. And then we have the master storage with the Google Password Manager. So there are a lot of disagreements if you read the technology sources on what they say about the password managers we put together our best feeling of a review of seven free ones free ones mm -hmm. although there's controversy in the industry about whether or not you should use a free one but a lot of people won't pay for these so we've got dash lane last pass sticky password among others and you can see how each of them work if you go and look at what we have on our free password manager guide at clark.com so coming up, we overpay for so many things in our lives just as creatures of habit. And I've got something that's a bit of a reach, but a way for you to save a ton on your monthly cell phone bill coming up. So what we pay for cell phones is one of the areas where we can make a big difference in our wallet. And there are so many ways now to reduce the cost and not reduce the experience you have using a service. Today I want to talk about a screaming deal on an unlimited plan for an individual. You don't have to be part of some family group or anything like that. But there is some sacrifice involved with it. It's with Boost Mobile, which is the cell phone carrier owned by Dish Network. And they offer a plan that's $25 a month, unlimited. You get unlimited talk and text, unlimited mobile data. Um, it's a really, really great deal at $25 a month. What's the problem? Well, we tested what the customer service experience was like at Boost, and it's pretty rotten terrible. They don't have their act together on customer service at all. In fact, they could make it in the uh, list of customer no service companies with what it's like doing business with them. So it's a, a bit of a mind numbing experience getting signed up. But once you do and you get established with the service, after that, you're just paying $25 a month and saving a lot of money. The network coverage is something that people have been happy with. Just so you know, the backbone is principally AT&T's network. So the service is reliable on it, but just $25 a month. So there are some things you need to know, hoops you jump through with Boost Mobile, that we put a briefing together, what you got to be aware of with Boost. Um, by the way, the $25 is not a teaser. That's the rate, and that includes your junk fees, taxes and fees. So, I mean, it is really, really a deal that could save you a lot of money. So you want to make sure you don't have the heartache. 
we've got a briefing what to know before signing up for boost mobile and the things that could go wrong uh dallas who writes our who covers the cell phone industry for us krista um she earned her pay when she went through testing out boost and dallas tests uh, how many different companies she, uh, does she so do many. the full bore testing she, a year she's got a huge list and, and this one it. this one was the one that tried her <laughs> patience so follow her knowledge and experience and what you do to get everything to work just right signing up for this plan and if you follow those steps it should be a breeze you should have no problems everything should be fine knock on formica <laughs> it should or whatever this fake stuff is from ikea yep anyway uh just just know that you will say big money and if i said enough things that make you think wow i'm not gonna step in that briar patch know that there are a lot of options today to lower the cost of your cell phone service one of those bills that just goes on and on and on and then with the recent price increases from verizon and at&t for customers of those two companies, now you're having to pay more money, even as their costs are going down, they're pretending hiding behind inflation and say, oh, because of inflation, we're charging you more, big fat lies. Anyway, you wanna use their price increases as an opportunity to lower your costs. All right, go to some questions yep. now. This is from Kirk in Iowa. We currently have a family Verizon phone plan, but want to switch to a lower cost provider such as Red Pocket. Can you recommend one that supports cell cellular, cellular watches? My wife has one in case of emergency while jogging. So for uh, generally it's going to be Apple Watch, where it's some Samsung that want to be connected like that. And... This is not easy because a lot of the, the lower cost cell phone carriers don't support smartwatch plans, at least not at this time. Probably Visible would be the one that is the one that I would recommend because the smartwatches are really cheap with them on a plan. Uh, I think as little as $5, $5 a, a month. month. Yeah. I mean, that would be great. And Visible, which is... Verizon's discount brand owned by Verizon, Verizon Network, the whole thing, um, is really cheap. $40 for one individual. It goes down from there for uh, to as low as $25 a month, just like the Boost if you're part of a group. And I'm on T-Mobile, which isn't a low-cost carrier, and we pay uh, $10 a month for watches to have the actual cell phone number where you don't need your phone near it. Um, so, which That's I what assume is what she's looking here. for yeah. us. She's a jogger. Yeah. So, yeah. so we pay, we're on T-Mobile and we're paying 15 and you're paying 10, 10. Yeah. You're saving five. I got to find I out. I should how probably you're doing have it that. on my smartwatch, my Samsung, but I don't because I'm too cheap to add another $10 line. Oh, does that have cellular? No, it, I think it does. I don't I think it, so. Oh, well, maybe well, that's why I don't have it then. <laughs> I'm too cheap and I don't even have it. All right. Uh, moving on. This is from Carol in Washington. Do you recommend refurbished cell phones? Who is the best to buy from? Would I be able to keep my same phone number? And what do I need to be aware of other than unlocked? I'm looking for a newer iPhone. So this is a huge business in the iPhone space. You know, Apple and the various cell phone carriers have offered each time a new Apple model comes out of the iPhone, they offer very generous trade-ins typically on prior versions. And they support that by creating a very large resale market, refurb market for Apple phones. The key with buying any refurb Apple phone, any iPhone, is what warranty comes with it. Because refurbs vary in quality a lot i mean when i see that word refurb and i'm like uh be very very careful and cautious so you can get a refurb iphone and it will be just fine or again it might not be what really matters is how they stand behind that refurb if they give you just a 30 day or 90 day coverage on it not good enough i'm looking for one year one year on a refurb iPhone. Um, otherwise, you're fine as long as it's unlocked, it'll work on any network. 
What about like on eBay? I feel like you've done this before. Buying one that's still in the packaging, but an older model, like new or older, like not. Yeah, you just got to uh, know that the IMEI is good, that it was not a stolen phone or right. whatever. Or if you buy and, it on like Facebook Marketplace, maybe you can meet at the Apple store. Well, you could do that. Service. But you know, if you buy on eBay and it's one of the big sellers of used cell phones, they will tell you the IMEI is they know is to be good or whatever, and they offer a full uh, refund, return for refund within 30 days at the legit sellers of used and refurb phones on eBay. Mm -hmm. eBay is a huge marketplace for legitimate yeah. buying of used and refurb iPhones. Now, Amazon has a big business that they do selling refurb iPhones. And with Amazon, be cautious. A lot of times they'll be on Woot, W-O-O-T.com, which is Amazon's main clearance site. You want to see how they stand behind that purchase of that iPhone before you buy it. This is from Jenny in Alaska. I'm 42 and got the investing and saving for retirement memo late. I now max out a Roth IRA and contribute to no fee individual investments. My only debt is a low interest mortgage. My nine to five pays $63,000 a year, but doesn't offer a 401k. I've got a side hustle, but haven't claimed much income, using it to lower my tax bill by claiming all eligible deductions. What's the best way to make headway toward retirement? Should I start a traditional IRA along with the Roth, put more into investments, stop claiming the business deductions to increase my net business revenue, and start a solo 401k? I have low monthly expenses, so I can throw a good chunk of income toward catching up on retirement. So you're already doing a great thing with your Fidelity um, a zero cost or low cost funds that you're going into. I assume those are Fidelity index funds. So uh, you're already doing something that's very tax efficient for you. With the side hustle, you could do a SEP. A SEP allows you to reduce current income, but it works like a traditional IRA later and that all the money in there plus whatever it earns is taxed. Uh, you could, since you're reporting so little income from that side gig, I would just keep pouring money into the Fidelity Index funds you're in. They're a great, very efficient choice that builds on top of the rest of what you're doing. And I think that's great. Uh, by the way, on your thing about you were a late starter and you're 42, so most people don't start saving for retirement till they're in their 40s because they got life going on in their 20s and 30s. There's an enormous advantage if you start, particularly in your 20s, saving for retirement because of how money grows over time. But you start when you start. You're obviously dedicated to building financial security and you're young enough with your aggressive intent to save to make it work for you. So don't worry, be happy. Except I don't know how you live through an Alaska winter with all that <laughs> darkness and cold. Alaska's so fun in the summer, can't do the winter there. So I wanna tell you, I hate that we get to so few of your questions here on our podcast. But I wanna tell you, we offer and have done so for just short of 30 years, free one-on-one -on -one advice and information to you through our Team Clark Consumer Action Center. And we're open Eastern time zone, 10 in the morning till four in the afternoon, Monday through Friday only. And the number is 636-49-CLARK. Again, that's 636-49-CLARK.